Billboards and other outdoor advertising can often be an eyesore, but one company has found a way to blend creativity with commerce. They put up custom murals, one hand-painted stroke at a time, delivering a client's message while also beautifying a neighborhood. Don Daler has the story. In cities around the country, street art attracts those looking for the perfect selfie backdrop. They are grand and intricate, colorful and sometimes controversial. And increasingly, they're selling something. You don't often think of advertising as art. You, you don't, and, and I think what's unique about you know, what we do is that it, it's art first, right? Paul Lindahl is the co-founder of Colossal Media. His Brooklyn-based company may be the largest hand-painted advertisement firm in the U.S., with clients including Samsung, Delta, Comedy Central, and Nintendo. What is the allure to these companies that are hiring you to do these? I think the allure is that they get access to these neighborhoods that we live in and that we work in. We really know about Brooklyn. You know, we really know about uh, the Arts District in Los Angeles. So I think that if you're a brand, it's about you know getting connected. It's about getting people's attention. You know, and we do that in a real truthful way. Lindahl and his crew have been getting people's attention since 2004. It took a while to change the perception of hand-painted ads as outdated and time-consuming and worth the additional cost. But now Colossal Media leases 120 walls in various cities, and the company raked in $24 million in sales last year. How much does social media play in this? Now with social media and being able to put out a message, somebody across the world might be able to see, you know, like the work that you've done. Lindahl says it's important for people to be able to see the painstaking process that leads to the final product. Outdoor art isn't easy to do. We were working through the bomb cyclone. We just pushed through that entire thing. We put something up on social media that showed the guys banging away while the, the wind was rushing by at 60 miles an hour. What's going on in here? So this is the room where we're mixing all of our colors. Every job that we do, we have to uh, take the artwork and literally dissect it. Um, so we find places on the artwork and isolate colors. But at the end of the day, when we walk away and we leave, like the result needs to look like a banner. Like it shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to tell that it's painted, right? It's got to be as good, if not better. Murals can be a big draw for tourists. Like in Miami's Wynwood Arts District where art breathed new life into a dying neighborhood. As the neighborhood grows, you'll be able to see pieces like this. Goldman Properties CEO Jessica Goldman Shrebnik curates the Street Art Museum. To me, it's, it's a pure expression of creativity to be able to do what these artists do. In 2009, she and her late father, Tony Goldman, opened the Wynwood Walls, transforming concrete into canvas and blight into light. We have from no visitors to over a million visitors a year coming through the Wynwood Walls. You hear every language. Two, two, three. And so that to me is what makes for a really vibrant, beautiful neighborhood. And I think the Wynwood Walls has done a beautiful job of democratizing the world of art and making it accessible to everybody. With an estimated 44 murals inside these walls, Shrebnik says this area has the highest concentration of street art in the country. This street art created a tourist industry. It created yeah. retail. It created a neighborhood. It's pretty extraordinary how one idea can have effects around the world and on so many levels. And I think we're just seeing the beginning. I think you're going to see so much more beautiful artwork, so much more public art, so much more art integrated into brands and products. And, um, you know, why not? It just makes life so much more exciting and interesting. And for once starving artists like Paul Lindahl, it makes for good business. Most artists I know have to have a second job. Uh huh. How are these guys doing? Well, you know, to me, uh, I found something that was that was really important, uh, and I, I really uh, fell in love with it. I wanted to build some sort of like sustainability around that, and I, I wanted to know like where I was going to be at when I woke up the next day, 
And so at Colossal, wanted to make a living. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to make a living. And when we started the company, you know, that was the objective. And I, I thought to myself, if I can do this myself for the rest of my life, I'll be really lucky. If you look at the company now, we've got 401k plans. Everybody's got every kind of dental plan. You're that you corporate. Could ever. We're a corporate, as you wouldn't believe. It's not about me anymore. There's 80 people with families now that have their own reasons for being at Colossal, and it's become something in its own self. And that, I think, is worth fighting for. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Don Daler, New York.